In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a collapsible menu in Figma in just a couple of minutes. I'll break down how each of these items is working with the hover state, as well as the animation that's having this little pop effect. It's actually pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you can see all the components I have here. We have a nav item, we have the main frame here, which should be called menu, and we have our two states basically for the collapsed and the expanded, and that's actually all we need to do. I'm gonna show you how to build this from scratch, so I'm gonna just scroll down here. We're gonna start with our two icons, so that's gonna be the hamburger menu, and then we can duplicate that and just have a close menu for that expanded state. I'm using Font Awesome, but you can use obviously whatever icons you want. We're actually gonna design the main expanded menu first and then kind of work backwards. So go ahead and grab this close icon and we're gonna uh, just duplicate another text layer for our title. We're gonna call this Navigate. You can change the font and then select the title and the close icon and hit Shift A just to group it in an auto layout. We can center that vertically. And if you notice that something is still not lining up vertically, make sure you go into the more menu and say align text baseline it is gonna check that. Just sometimes with different fonts and icons because this is also an icon font, things don't always line up vertically. So that's a quick fix for that. We're gonna rename this frame three to header and I'll explain why in a couple minutes. And we can set this to a fixed width so that we can eventually fill the container when we build out the menu. And the main reason to do this is if we click on the title, we can change this from hug to fill, and that's gonna automatically push our icon to the edge of this box. So now if I expand this out, you can see that that X mark just kinda uh, hugs the right end of the container. Now while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this out again. We're gonna rename this to nav item. You can select that X mark and we're gonna hit command left bracket just to flip the order. And this is gonna be for our icons for each of the uh, different nav items. You know, it can be whatever you really want. If you don't want an icon, you can skip this step. But while we had that set up, it's really great. And while we're here for the nav item, just hit alt uh, command K and that'll create a component out of the nav item. Now we're gonna go ahead and create the hover state for the navigation item. So go over to properties and then select variant, then click that plus and it'll just create a nice duplicate version. Go ahead and style it however you want just to keep things simple. I'm gonna use an underline, set this to medium. And programming a hover state for something like this is actually really simple. You can switch over to prototype mode at the top right and then you can just click and drag this blue circle down to the other variant and we can, instead of having it on on click, set it to while hovering. You can mess around with the different animations if you want, but that's essentially all you have to do. You'll notice it says variant two here, and that's just because I was a little bit lazy and I didn't rename these, but basically you can have a default for this version and then we're, we can rename this to hover. And essentially that's all you have to do for the nav items. Uh, like I said, you can style it however you want, but I'm gonna just keep it pretty simple. Now we can alt drag this out of that uh, nav item box into our expanded state. We're gonna take this whole group here, the header as well as the nav item and hit shift A. That's gonna group everything in an auto layout group. So if we take a look at our containers here, we look at frame three, we have header and then we have nav item. So we can rename this to menu and then just duplicate however many items you want. And what's great about components is you can have local overrides for each of these instances. So, you know, this could be about, this could be services. You're not editing the main component. You can style this however you want. Um, again, this is why I love Font Awesome because you could have uh, pretty much whatever, you know, icon you want. You just type it right in there. Uh, if I say like dollar, I've got that all set up. I'm gonna fix one thing here. You'll notice the icons aren't lining up. And this is one really great reason to have everything linked to a component because we can now go change it in one place and not have to update it every single time. So head over to the component. And if you select this uh, icon layer, you'll see we have this select matching layers. And if anything is uh, named the same in the layers panel, um, and it also has the same hierarchy, it'll show up and it'll work for you that way. I'm just gonna have a fixed width to fix our problem set it to like 20 and center align, and now you'll see everything is aligned pretty nicely. 
So essentially we've got our main menu set up with all our items. Again, these hover states are already baked in because we did that at the component level. Um, just to show you that really quick, if I select one of these, you'll see each one of them has that hover already built in and I didn't have to do it each time. Now, all we have to do is essentially just select the close icon as well as, uh, or sorry, the expand icon, which is that hamburger menu and the menu here. And we're gonna create a component out of that whole group. Now, this is essentially going to uh, wrap everything in one go and we can eventually split this out if we want. Another way to do it is to create, uh, select this here and then hit this drop down, select multiple components and then combine as variants. Um, if you skip that step or, or missed what I did there, essentially it created separate components because we do want these to be uh, prototyped between the two, but then we wanna eventually wrap it as one main component. So now that that's set up, uh, what we're gonna do is go to the bars icon and we're going to click into this icon here and hit shift A and rename this to header. Now I like to keep this as a fixed height so it's a nice square. Um, 40, 40, keeps it nice and simple. And then the reason we re rename it to header is because we want this to be able to smart animate so that this bar animation uh, basically changes and transforms into that close icon and it needs to match the same hierarchy. So we have header, like you see here, we have header at the top. Now we do need to also make sure the icon layers are the same. So you can select both of those, just hit command R and changes to icon. That way it'll know that basically to look for that header group and then look for icon and it can essentially smart animate once we get there. Now we've got our bars icon. You'll see we've got this kind of this weird uh, rectangle hasn't resized. You can just hop over to the top right, hit resize. That'll get give us our nice 40, 40. And we can hit shift E to go into prototype mode. We're going to basically just connect these two variants. So click and drag down to the bottom window and on click, we want it to change to that other expanded menu. And instead of having it to dissolve, you, you wanna make sure we have it set to smart animate. If you don't have it set to smart animate, it won't necessarily be as fluid and as smooth, but again, it's all kind of dependent on building the structure in the way we did so that we have the same groups, the same layer names, so that Figma knows what to look for when it's applying that smart animate. And essentially that's all we have to do. We do wanna make sure we uh, prototype the close icon, but as far as the actual expanded state, that's the basics of the animation. Now within the smart animate panel, we can also play around with that animation style. You could have this be a quick bounce or gentle. It's totally up to you. I like to keep it um, around 500 or 400 milliseconds, just feels a little snappier. And then we're just gonna prototype back that uh, close icon. So if we select that icon, we drag back to the other variant. We can have it set to on click, change to the other variation and hit smart animate. I know my labels are a bit messed up, so we can, again, just click those variants here. We can have this as, you know, collapsed, select the other variant and make sure this says expanded. And essentially we've connected those two and, and labeled them quite clearly. Now, in order to test this in prototype mode, we're gonna to wanna to create a frame. You can't really do anything in prototype mode without a frame in Figma. So go ahead and drag, and all I did was just alt click and drag that off into our frame. We can select that, head over to prototype mode, and if we click this, you'll see we basically have our menu. We also have our different hover states for each of these items. We hit close and it snaps back. That's a little intense. Uh, so I might fix that just by jumping back in here. I'm gonna have this set to maybe quick. And for the other one, instead of bouncy, I'll have it set to gentle. Since it's more important that it comes out quicker than it is when it, uh, or closes, it can be a little bit slower. Um, and I also noticed that we didn't have any background for this. So if you wanna add something here, you can, um, maybe like a rounded or you, know, you can play around with a shadow, totally up to you. Um, if you wanna add some spacing, we can select that bottom variant, the expanded state. We can um, play around with the uh, coloring there. And if ever you find that your component's being cropped off like this, you can select the main group here and again, hit that resize to fit icon at the top right and that'll just snap into place. Um, if you're working on stuff on the fly, you can also hold command and just click and drag this window and it'll allow you to resize however you want. 
So I'm gonna leave this with the background uh, color and the padding. And if we hop back into prototype mode, you'll see that this is animating pretty nicely. Now again, you can tweak the styling, you can tweak the animation, but that's essentially how this whole prototype is set up. Really, it is just two simple components with two variants each. And just like that, you've basically created your expandable menu. So hopefully that was helpful. If so, be sure to like and subscribe for more Figma tips and tricks. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.